Hello, my name is Nicole Caballero, and I am a PA student, physician assistant student at South University in West Palm Beach, Florida. A physician assistant is a healthcare provider who diagnoses, illnesses, manages treatment, and prescribes medication while working directly with the doctor in managing patients' health. We all work together as a team with various healthcare professionals to all carry out one common goal, and that is the best care to our patients. So just a little bit about me. I am 26 years old. I am from Miami, Florida. Uh, my absolute happy place is going to the beach. I enjoy hanging out with my friends and family in my free time. I'm always trying to do something outdoors, very adventurous, and I enjoy eating healthy. Uh, so I've been working on my capstone project throughout my time in school, and I'm here today to shine some light on the topic that I have chosen to do research on, which is Alzheimer's prevention. Uh, my advisor for this project is the wonderful Professor Nantes, and my target audience is adolescents, so ages 18 to 22 years old. I chose this topic because I have family members who have suffered from Alzheimer's disease, and I have seen firsthand the hardships that they have to endure, and no family member should ever have to go through any of that. Alzheimer's can potentially be prevented by altering one's lifestyle from a young age, and I'm here to hopefully spread awareness and change the trajectory of one's life in the future. Healthy People 2030, uh, it's a site where the public can find relevant information on any medical topic, um, and you can find different sources that can help and aid in providing knowledge for a healthier future. My topic applies to Healthy People 2030, um, such that it increasing mental, mental and physical health awareness between the ages of 18 to 22 year olds in order to potentially lower the risk of Alzheimer's disease in comparison to those being exposed at greater risks. Alzheimer's is the most common form of dementia, and it's a progressive disease that can start um, somewhere ranging in any age. Dementia is a chronic condition in which one's cognitive impairment, such as your memory, speech, your ability to comprehend information, etc., it all starts to decline. Alzheimer's disease is the accelerated version of dementia. This disease will slowly start to kill your memory and other physical and mental abilities, which leads you to not carry out simple tasks such as solving problems, remembering certain names, uh, trying to remember simple tasks, difficulty forming sentences in their head, slower response time, repeating questions, changes in personality, changes in behavior, difficulty dressing oneself, feeding oneself, uh, showering, even walking. So another way to think about it, you know, as we all get older, we develop plaques that can clog our arteries, then which leads to a lack of blood flow to the heart, which can then lead to a stroke. So we also have plaques in our brain that are getting clogged over time, which doesn't allow that proper information to flow, which can lead to that Alzheimer's dementia. What people don't know is that what we put into our bodies and how we treat our bodies is very important into how we will turn out into our later stages of life. Everyone knows the expression, our body is our temple. Well, that is very important to remember as um, we are young, we typically don't put that much attention to what we eat or what stress we put onto our bodies. Uh, in the short term, we really don't see any outcomes, but in the long run, that's when we start to see that negative effect and then it's too late and we're just, we end up being more susceptible to many different kinds of different um, illnesses. So once we get older, it's too late to reverse what we did to our younger selves. And then people with Alzheimer's are now just taking pills to prolong those horrible symptoms and masking that bigger issue at hand. So I'm here today to really dig deep into this issue by trying to correct it at a young age without taking any medications, which will then in turn to lead, uh, will lead to all of us living healthier, longer lives. These symptoms will start to show in around your mid-60s, but what most people don't know is that it will start to manifest in early life without the patient even knowing. Alzheimer's is the sixth leading cause of death in the United States and the fifth leading cause of death to those ages 65 and older. Alzheimer's is the leading cause of disability and poor health in older adults. Between 2000, the year of 2000 and 2019, the number of deaths from Alzheimer's disease more than doubled, which is insane, 
And that is just something to think about while putting everything that we talk about today into perspective. Before we begin, I just want to ask a few questions just to get you all thinking about how you live your life each and every day. How many people here do any kind of uh, physical activity every day? How many people prefer to sit on the couch after a long day of school or work? How many people take vitamins or know what vitamins are? How many people know how to cook for themselves and understand how to read food labels? How many people prefer to pick up food at a restaurant because it's more convenient? How many people feel constant stress in their lives and don't know how to tackle it at times? How many people here get a full eight hours of sleep? How many people uh, go on social media during their pastime, either on their phone or their computer? My goal today is at the end of uh, this conversation, the audience and you guys should be able to utilize different preventative medicine methods and factors that one can change physically and mentally and incorporate that into our daily lives to protect our brain health and potentially prevent Alzheimer's disease. Today, I will be going over six different aspects that you can modify from your life to decrease your risk of getting diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. First is physical exercise habits. Not enough physical activity will directly affect the brain's health and cognitive function and will act as a form of preventative medicine with more awareness. Not only can this be used as a way to prolong Alzheimer's deterioration that it has on your body, but to prevent it overall if it becomes incorporated into your lifestyle from a young age. I know most people here, uh, probably when they hear exercise, they automatically think going to the gym, going on a treadmill, which sounds more like a job than something fun and enjoyable. Well, there are so many different other kinds of activities to get involved in that can be exercised without stepping foot inside of a gym and can even be from the comfort of your own home. Per the research, people should be doing moderate to intense aerobic physical activity for a minimum of 30 minutes, five days a week, or vigorous to intense aerobic activity for a minimum of 20 minutes, three days a week. Aerobic activities are to get your blood and oxygen flowing through your body. Different ideas of activities you can do are walking, swimming, running, cycling, jump roping, jumping jacks, lunges, jogging in place, and so much more. I know people will always say that life will get in the way, um, and life does get complicated, but there are, diff there are many ways that you can incorporate physical activity into your daily lives. By, by, by partaking in these activities will not only help in preventing Alzheimer's, but also positively help so many other aspects of your physical and mental health. These are some exercises that you can do from the comfort of your own home and make sure to keep good form. First off, we have jumping jacks. Next is lunges. Next we have a squat. Next we have high knees. Next we have mountain climbers. Make sure not to bend the elbow. Next we have donkey kicks. Next we have flutter kicks. Next we have butt kicks. And finally, the invisible jump rope if you don't have a jump rope available at home. The second thing we're going to be talking about is how to incorporate different vitamins and supplements into your daily morning routine. When people hear the word vitamins, they automatically think that it's for old people. 
A lot of the younger population believe that vitamins should be taken as you get to the older stage of life, but they are absolutely wrong. Vitamins and supplements should be taken from the start of our early ages. As we spoke before about the plaques in our brain forming from the time that we are born and only accumulate and grow as we, get, as we age based on how we treat our temple. While there are various amounts of vitamins and supplements that you can grab over the counter, per the research, certain vitamins have a positive effect in our brain health and can prevent Alzheimer's disease while maintaining other aspects of our bodies healthy with just a simple extra step in the morning. All of these supplements can be incorporated into our daily life and we can make it part of our routine, such as taking it with breakfast. Some of the vitamins per the research that can improve our brain health are B complex vitamins, B12, folic acid B6, vitamin D, homocysteine, omega-3 fatty acids, fish oil, DHA, EPA, turmeric, and theracurmin. Here is a short clip that can give you helpful tips on where to store your vitamins so we make sure that we take them each and every day. Well, I've remembered to take my daily multivitamin. That's a good thing. But what's wrong with this picture? Well, I can tell you what it is. The vitamins are stored next to the kitchen sink. In fact, storing your vitamins anywhere in the kitchen where there's moisture and there's heat is not a good thing because it actually reduces the potency of the vitamins. They won't last as long. The other place people like to keep their vitamins is in the bathroom. Again, not a good choice to have them in the bathroom cabinet with showers and the heat and the moisture. Instead, think of cool, dry places in your home that are convenient to your routine, like the family breakfast nook, your dressing or bedside table, even your office, but not your car. The key is to choose a spot away from moisture, heat, and direct light. Keeping your vitamin tablets in the refrigerator is another poor choice. That's because going from cold temperatures to room temperature and back again can cause condensation, and that moisture affects the potency of vitamins. While the FDA does not require that vitamin companies put expiration dates on their products, most of them do anyway, and it's a good thing to look for. If the expiration is out of date, it doesn't mean that the product is bad for you, it just means that the vitamins might have lost their potency. Another thing to keep in mind when you're storing your vitamins at home, keep them away from children. Even if they have a childproof cap, it's just not worth the risk because vitamins taken in high doses can be toxic. So here are the important points to remember. Avoid heat, moisture, and direct light. Avoid using the refrigerator unless directed to store them there. Examine the expiration date and keep all supplements far away from children. The third topic we are going to talk about is changes in your diet and what you eat on a day-to-day -day basis. Most of us live very busy lives and get caught up in the moment, and most of us forget to eat our proper meals and rely on fast foods that are quick and convenient which also tastes delicious. When we are young, most adolescents don't pay attention to what they eat and will eat whatever is in front of them. Majority of the population has become accustomed to eating non-healthier foods due to convenience and money, which has an effect on our brains, making it hard for us to break the bad habit of eating those unhealthy foods. Here's a little clip to explain why our bodies love junk food so much. It's Umsum time! Why do we love junk food? Cause it looks cool, bro. Nah. We love junk food because manufacturers oh. design it to activate our ah. brain's reward system. They create the perfect combination of salt, sugar, spices, etc. which excite our ah. taste buds, thus activating our brain's reward system, making us ah. feel good. Now, after this, when we eat regular food, as it doesn't activate the reward system, it feels less appealing. Besides this, if we compare these foods, the quantity of healthy food looks more, right? But surprisingly, they both contain the same number of calories. What? Yes. 
Now, since healthy food also contains fiber and water, they add up to the volume, thus filling our stomach. But, as the junk food doesn't have enough water and fiber, it doesn't fill us. So, we keep eating and thus end up consuming more calories, leading to obesity, diabetes, oh. etc. Mm. Without the proper nutrients you obtain from food, more plaques will continue to form in the brain, putting you more at risk for Alzheimer's disease. Moderation in what you eat is an important lesson and learning how to balance unhealthy foods with healthy foods. Making the change in learning how to cook healthy meals and learning how to create fun ways to cook healthy meals can make significant changes in your life and make it seem less as a job and more of a habit. Learning from a young age what food groups are healthy and which aren't will create more awareness and we can start to make it a cool trend. ice cream, a piece of chocolate, pizza, macaroni, and cheese. Oh, how I love food. That is not food. That is junk food. And you know that junk food is unhealthy, right? I know, I know. But why? I mean, how can something that tastes so good be so bad for us? It is quite simple, Bumbly. We need food to supply us with nutrients. Nutrients which are used to build our body and fuel it. Why can't junk food do that for us? Because junk food doesn't have enough nutrients in it. It does not give you energy to play or stay strong. I don't mind playing if I can have an extra burger. Really? You prefer a burger over playtime? Actually, no. I want both. Can't I have both? You can if you go slow on the junk food and eat more fruits and vegetables. That way, you are giving your body enough nourishment too. Hmm. I think I can do that. <sighs> sleepy now. Well, junk food does that to you. It makes you sleepy and tired. You can sleep if you want. I'm gonna play basketball. No, wait for me. I too want to play. Fatty acids are not good for the brain health as it affects ACH release in the brain which is what stimulates the plaque in our brains. Eating polyunsaturated foods will stimulate cholinergic transmission, which is good for our brains. Certain diets and what patients put into their bodies directly affects our brain health. Not only can this be used as a way to prolong Alzheimer's deterioration, but to prevent it overall if it becomes incorporated into our daily lifestyle from a young age. Good dietary habits have an immense positive effect on the brain health. Our fifth topic that we're going to talk about today is sleep hygiene. A lot of us truthfully do not get the full eight hours of sleep as we should each night, and there could be many reasons as to why. Not enough sleep will contribute to the cognitive decline and it is very important to figure out the main reason as to why you are not getting enough sleep and correct it in order to get back to a healthy sleep routine. We will be going over different habits to incorporate into your daily life that will lead to more sleep which will then decrease inflammation in the brain leading to Alzheimer's disease. This clip will show you different tips and tricks to um, improve your sleep hygiene. Sleep hygiene. Are you having trouble sleeping? Do not feel alone. Almost 20% of Americans report difficulty falling asleep and or staying asleep. Of those, 
About 10% describe it as a serious problem. Often sleep can be improved by simple changes to sleep-wake patterns and practices. We call these changes improving your sleep hygiene. Although the basic rules of sleep hygiene may seem like common sense, they are often overlooked. Important issues for good sleep hygiene. Sleep schedule. Our bodies are designed to be synchronized to the daily cycles of sunlight and darkness. If our bodies get out of tune, the peaks and valleys of body temperature, hormone production, and digestion occur at the wrong times of the day. This lack of synchrony interferes with sleep and lessens daytime alertness. It is important to get up about the same time each day, even on the weekends, to help your body maintain a daily rhythm that is in tune with the 24-hour light-dark cycle. Because exposure to light in the morning is so important for synchronization, sleeping in too long on your days off can cause your internal body rhythms to drift. Sleep efficiency. An efficient sleeper is someone who is asleep most of the time they are in bed with the lights out. If you are awake for a large part of the night, perhaps you're spending too much time in bed. Try going to bed a little later or getting up a little earlier. Sleep environment. Light reading and relaxing music can set the stage for a restful sleep. Watching upsetting or stimulating programs on television can have the opposite effect. Only use the bedroom for sleep and Caffeine, alcohol, and tobacco. If you are having trouble with insomnia or difficulty sleeping, it may be related to caffeine, alcohol, or tobacco use. Try limiting your total caffeine use to no more than two caffeinated beverages per day. Remember, in addition to coffee, many soft drinks have large quantities of caffeine. Do not drink beverages with caffeine after 12 noon. For some, the caffeine effects from a morning cup of coffee are not out of the body until nightfall. Switch to decaffeinated beverages. Good quality decaf coffees are hard to tell from caffeinated ones. Alcohol can also affect a good night's sleep. A drink close to bedtime may make you sleepy, but as it wears off, there is a rebound alerting effect that can prevent good sleep. Be cautious and on the low side in your alcohol intake, especially in the evening. There are many reasons not to smoke, and your sleep is one of them. Nicotine has a stimulating effect and prevents sleep. Some smokers have to wake up during the night for a cigarette. Exercise. There is good evidence that regular exercise improves restful sleep. Although exercise is great, avoid working out too close to bedtime. Exercise gets your adrenaline going and makes it hard to sleep. Napping during the day. Most adults cannot sleep more than seven or eight hours per 24 hour period. If you nap during the day, it is subtracted from your nighttime sleep. A short nap is harmless for most people and may be refreshing. However, naps lasting longer than 30 minutes may cause you to wake up feeling groggy and you might have trouble sleeping at night. Okay. Time for a pop quiz to see what we have learned so far on our sleep hygiene. Keeping a regular sleep schedule may help you sleep better. True or false? That is true. Caffeinated beverages after noon can cause difficulty sleeping. True or false? That is true. Rigorous exercise at bedtime can help improve your sleep patterns. True or false? That is false. Next, I'm going to talk about stress reduction. Everyone in life has stressors that are inevitable. It is how we respond to the stress around us and how we learn how to cope with what life throws at us is what separates the weak from the strong. In school, we were never really taught much on mental health. Stress does play a very negative role to the addition of the plaques in our brain. I am here to teach you different ways in learning how to free your mind and finding a route that will help you get back to your center. These skills can be incorporated into your daily life to reduce stress levels on your body. I hope you enjoy this clip.
Adrian, I'm Adrian, and this is Benji, and we have a super simple, super sweet mindfulness meditation to help you start your day. So grab a blanket or a pillow to sit on if you like, and let's get started. All right, my darling friends, good morning. We're gonna begin in a nice, comfortable, seated position of your choice. So you can come onto the ground, sit on a pillow or a blanket or a towel. You can also do this sitting up nice and tall at the edge of your couch or a chair. But we do wanna come into a position in which we can begin to sit up nice and tall through the spine. And then begin to relax your shoulders, settle in. And wherever the hands fall naturally, embrace that. So explore what feels good today. Palms face up, palms close in to your center, maybe hands together in your lap. Maybe you take a mudra. So just start to listen to your body. This is gonna be important as we set ourselves up to have an awesome day, present with what is, open-minded, available, for whatever the universe has in store. Take a moment to begin to notice your breath, and as you do that, soften your gaze or close your eyes. So we're sitting up tall, Closing the eyes, despite maybe feeling a little sleepy, don't worry. And we're gently beginning to deepen the breath. And as you're ready, nice and slow, you're gonna drop your chin to your chest. And then lift your nose up towards the sky. Slow and steady, dropping the chin. and then nose to the heavens. Start to sync up with nice, full, conscious breaths. Nodding the head. And then bring it back to center stillness, and you're just gonna take it in the opposite direction now, side to side, <clears throat> excuse me, taking your nose to the left and to the right. Nice and easy. <clears throat> then come back to center, reset, sit up nice and tall, close your eyes or soften your gaze. Last but not least, we're going to discuss strengthening your brain power. Not enough cognitive engagement, brain training, and stimulation will negatively affect the brain's health and cognitive function. As we learned today, this is a form of preventative medicine with more awareness. Not using the brain can have an immense negative effect on your brain health. If you don't use it, you lose it. These are different uh, pictures of websites that are free to sign up that have a lot of different brain games that you can participate from your phone or from your computer. Not using the brain has like we said, negative effects on brain health. During your past time, you can engage in these activities to stimulate your brain instead of using social media. Flexibility, memory, attention, speed, and problem solving for 15 minutes for seven days a week will significantly increase your brain power and diminish your chances of getting Alzheimer's disease.
After listening to me today, I hope you all have learned of valuable information that you will take with you for the rest of your lives. Maintaining good physical exercise habits, taking your vitamins and supplements, making, maintaining your diet, stress reduction, sleep hygiene, and brain training will all be beneficial to not only the prevention of Alzheimer's, but other diseases that could possibly arise. Short term, it all seems like a lot of added stress and inconvenience, but in the long run, it can change the trajectory of your life. Incorporating good habits into your daily life will stop feeling like a job and become a part of who you are as a human. Thank you for taking the time to listen to me today, and if you have any questions, please let me know.